Hey everybody, I've got such a cool one for you today because I am all about obscure off-roaders. And when it comes to obscure off-roaders, this is certainly one of the coolest out there. And we've got Andy, who has brought along his Geo Tracker, right? That is correct. Dude, this thing is freaking cool. So what is the story with this? How did you get into trackers? Did you look for this vehicle? So my dad had a four-door tracker, or sidekick rather, back in the 90s. Yeah. Um, and I grew up in the passenger seat of that and a Suzuki X90, which is what my mom had. Um, they got rid of those vehicles pretty short, you know, pretty quick lived. Uh, so when I moved to Colorado, I moved here in 1986 MR2 and I decided I didn't want to drive in the snow. So I went looking for a cheap four x four. I remember these things were pretty cheap, pretty robust from what I recalled. And I was like, let's see if I can find one. Um, and in my searches, I found out there was a whole community behind these cars, huh. people wheeling them all over the place. And I'm like, this is proper, proper four x four right here. So I found a four door, had that for, um, you know, through the, throughout a winter season. And as much as I enjoyed the four door, it was a four speed auto. Mm. And I was like really set after a five speed manual. And not only that, I really wanted a two door too. The more I saw them, the more my heart longed for one. So I posted up an ad seeing if anyone had a two door specifically, just a two door uh, tracker in trade for my four door sidekick. And somehow someone in Parker showed up and was like, yeah, I want a bigger sidekick because I have a dog, I want more space. And we just did a straight across trade. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. I love that. So can you tell me a little bit of history behind this vehicle? Because I know it's related to a Suzuki, um, but what is it underneath? It is a Suzuki sidekick. Okay. Um, every other iteration of it is a rebadge. There are many oh. different iterations. Canada had two of their own um, modeled as a Pontiac Sunrunner and a Suna Sunrunner, I believe. Uh, a lot of weird gray market, you know, brandness going on there. But through and through, this is all Suzuki built with other badges stamped on there. So when we're saying like Suzuki built, like engine Suzuki, uh, the platform, the, yes. the steering gear is all Suzuki. Yes, yeah, Suzuki designed this car originally, and it's been sold throughout, you know, North America and the global markets and all under all sorts of different names. Love it. So yeah. what I didn't know about this, so um, obviously Suzuki had the Samurai, which was two-door convertible, and then the Sidekick, was that only available in the States as a four-door like wagon, or was there a two-door version too, do you know? That's an interesting question. And I've actually thought about this because I don't, I don't ever see the sidekicks as two doors. Yeah. But I have seen people post photos online of, in Georgia, you know, Kentucky of two door sidekicks with sidekick badging all around. Mm -hmm. So I guess some, some of them made it to the States somehow. Interesting. Uh, I don't really know how, but they did. Now, Geo was a sub-brand of General Motors, right? Like yep, it was related correct. to Chevrolet. Mm -hmm. And um, so you bought this vehicle and I mean, did it look like this or was it completely stock? It was completely stock. Okay. Um, I put on this book shield. Love it. The Jeep hood latches yep. are on there. They serve a functional purpose. My hood latch, the OEM hood latch broke. <laughs> um, I welded together a not so very well built skid plate right there. Yeah. Um, but really, honestly, beyond kind of cosmetics like that, beyond my shifter knob, steering wheel, and random various things I've hung around this, this is basically a stock Geo Tracker, um, even on essentially stock size tires. Wow. I think they might be a size up from stock, but they could have rocked 215s back in the day for all I know. Now, when you showed up, I swear those wheels were from a Geo Tracker originally, <laughs> but where did you find these wheels? So the 4x4 version of the Suzuki X90 had these wheels and these were specifically to the 4x4 version only. So previous owner or one of the previous owners, I believe I'm the third, found an X90 with a fantastic set of wheels on them and decided to swap them over onto a Geo Tracker. So probably, you know, had to go looking for them specifically, <laughs> unless, you know, you just run into them at a junkyard and are like, ooh, these are nice. <laughs> and what about the tires? Did you do the tires? Uh, no, the previous owner did the tires and what do you they, think of them? They have been serving me well, Yeah. but they have gotten loud. Okay. I took a long trip down to Texas and it was just uh, essentially two you know, days of driving 800 miles each way, um, both there and back. And they got loud, they started cupping. I think it's because I'm running them at like 40 PSI, mm -hmm. you know, to try to get as much mileage out of them. Sure. Um, but that's kind of worn the center tread down. So if you guys, you know, if, if y'all like crosswinds, they're good for trails, but they do get loud. 
So um, this is what I think is really cool about you, Andy, is like folks like me think you need uh, modern luxuries for road trips and stuff, but you drive this thing everywhere. How many miles have you put on it? I think in the last year, about 10,000. <laughs> I, I have three other vehicles, right, okay. including a bicycle. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I have to share my time equally among all of them, and my motorcycle takes up a lot of time in the summer. Uh, so this is almost a commuter slash trail running vehicle, you know, for camping and stuff. Yeah, yeah. How does it do off-road? Oh, fantastic. Yeah? Oh, so good. This short wheelbase, like, I don't, I don't know how to explain how underrated an, a short wheelbase vehicle is. Like, all these roads, I think you'd need much bigger tires on a, you know, longer vehicle to do them. But I can just get around obstacles so easily. And if I see a rock, you know, it's no problem to turn around it because my rear wheels will follow right after me. Did you say it's, you ran, we, we were talking off camera, you said you ran Black Bear in this? Yeah. 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 I ran Black, uh, that was the first trail uh, I did. I my friend flew in last year and I decided to show him the San Juans and the first trail we decided to hit was Black Bear. <laughs> awesome. uh, he was terrified the whole time, but he was a great, great spotter, especially for someone who's never done it, you know, before. So it was a, it was a great trip. So what's the engine in these? What's under the hood? Ooh, uh, you ready for this? Yeah. Eight valve, TBI is my, oh, my head latch decided to start working. I guess when these things rattle themselves enough, you know, things, work and don't work. Sure, no, I get it. Eight valve TBI power plant. Look at that, electronic fuel injection. Yeah, I know, I love how they are so proud of that. That's awesome. Now, are parts pretty gettable? Yeah, um, that O2 sensor arrived to me in like two days from Amazon and it's been functioning well for the last few thousand miles. Nice. Um, you know, there are parts here and there that are kind of hard to get, maybe some of the more specific like IVAC valves or, you know, vacuum actuators maybe TPS, uh, yeah. 16 valve. The TPS on those are like way more expensive than these. Oh, really? These are like 25, those are like 200. Do you know what the horsepower is? Any idea? Stock, brand new from the factory at sea level 80, 85. How does it do in the Colorado Rockies? Like, I'm doing 45 up the passes. Okay. <laughs> and 45 is all I manage in third with my foot to the floor. Gotcha. So, so you, well. so you got a longitudinal four cylinder, <laughs> sure do. five speed manual, and then um, these have a low range, right? Like it's a real four wheel drive. Yep, yep. It's a fully mechanical, um, four high, four low, and two wheel drive. Nice. N neutral and transfer case. And then solid rear axle? Solid rear axle, yep. Nice. It makes for a jarring ride. Like, Does it? You kind of look at this, you expect it to be a bigger, softer, comfier car, but man, this thing rides like a, like a truck. Does it? With an <laughs> empty bed, it's, uh, it's pretty jarring. So, um, what are you planning? Are you going to lift it? Are you going to modify it? Or are you just kind of kind of leave it stock? What are you thinking? I take pride in the fact that it can do all it's done so far on a stock. And I think I want to keep trying to do things until I can't anymore. Mm. But bigger tires are in, in its future for sure. Not too much bigger because they run into problems when you get you know, above 30 inches. Uh, even 28s require some major modifications. Or, I mean, 30s. But otherwise, I'm going to gonna leave it stock until parts break and I'll fix them when they do, you know? And you were talking off camera, and this is the thing I didn't realize, right? Like, there's a big worldwide community. Oh, absolutely. Around the Suzuki yeah. off-road world. So I kind of figured lockers, bumpers, that kind of thing would be unattainium, but I guess that's not true. No, uh, ARB makes parts for this. They make pneumatic and uh, hydraulic lockers for this, front and rear. Uh, you know, some are easier to find than the others. Um, so you think you can get a front locker? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, um, they make uh, lunchbox lockers. There's like four companies you can buy $200 lunchboxes from, you know, so they, there are parts for this somehow. Uh, and I'm very happy to see that all these companies are still supporting these, you know. Nice. This is kind of, you know, makes them a real four by four, right? So if someone, and correct, the answer is yes, you do want one now. Um, <laughs> if someone wanted to go out and buy one, what are they typically worth? What, what do they cost? Ooh, um, it really depends on who you get it from, right? There's a lot of people out there with junky ones. They don't really care about them. They're, it's their farm vehicle, their backup vehicle. They'll let it go for a thousand dollars all day. Um, but then the people who do know about them, you know, like the nicer ones, the lower mileage ones, those I've seen them go for six k, eight k. I've heard in Canada they're in the double digits, ten to twelve k. Right. But Canada's a special market, I suppose. Right, which is interesting. I mean. And that you're probably thinking, oh, well, 6K for Geo Tracker, but in this market, like a YJ Ring was going to be 8 to 10 for a decent one, right? So they're still very affordable well, relative to the market. It's not only that, but I think the Tracker offers a unique experience that no other vehicle on the market, including Jeep, offers. Mm. And, you know, sure, a two door Wrangler is quite similar to this, but 
I think there's just less going on here, and this is even more of a raw experience than a Jeep. Fair enough. No, I agree. That's um, a great point. And are they are they only soft tops, or did they do hard tops? No, they, they did uh, four door hard tops, uh, two door hard tops, and two door soft tops. Oh, nice. So cool. there's a range of options. Sweet. Does that have AC? No. No, oh, not this one. My four door did. Um, I used it once when it was 100 degrees last year, and I turned off after five minutes because I couldn't go up hills. <laughs> Do they have cruise control? My four door did. <laughs> not this one. This one is the complete. My four door is fully loaded. It was the GLX model. This is like the most base you can get. I don't. I don't think it gets more base than this thing. Uh, but man. for me, that's less parts to break. You know. Yeah, I think. I think we need to bring back the the purple and the turquoise. Oh, absolutely. Looks so Absolutely. good. Absolutely. These things came in such good colorways back in the 90s. Um, and, you know, the pink pinstriping and the turquoise badging. Is, and that's all factory? Like this all is all factory. <laughs> yeah, that's original pinstriping right there. I'm just so happy they did that. I, I love it. Manufacturers these days are brave enough to do something as bold as that. Well, I can't thank Andy enough for showing me around this tracker. Um, I'm going to go hop on Facebook after this because <laughs> now I have a new obsession. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, dude. I really appreciate it. Absolutely.